Hello and welcome to part four in our series of Holy Week Reflections. The passage we're focusing on this evening is found in Luke's Gospel, reading from chapter 23, verses 13 to 21. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore I will punish him and then release him. With one voice they cried out, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! Barabbas had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! Judas has acted betraying and sealing Jesus' fate with a kiss. Amidst the darkness of the late night hour, soldiers and servants seize Jesus, their faces etched with triumphant smiles. As disciples scatter, Peter, filled with anger, pulls out a sword and swings it at those nearest Jesus. He claims an ear and feels the stinging rebuke of his master. The leader's show of force has worked. Jesus is finally in their hands. Having waited years for this moment, they will not let him slip away as he had done before. Firmly in their grasp, they abruptly lead Jesus back through the garden to the house of Annas, a former high priest, to begin the first of six trials he will have. The trials get underway quickly. They have to be carried out so as to ensure a damning verdict by daybreak. Passed on from a frustrated Annas to Caiaphas, the current high priest, Jesus is declared guilty of blasphemy as he breaks his silence. His face streaked with blood, he is sentenced to death. But it's a sentence they cannot carry out, only Rome can. And so Jesus must have an audience with Pilate, the Roman governor of Judea, to decide his fate. Yet Pilate finds no guilt in Jesus, nor Herod Antipas either. None of this serves to satisfy the religious council's deathly agenda, as Jesus' sixth and final trial begins. Pilate wants to punish and release Jesus as the Passover pardoned prisoner, but the crowd want Barabbas released back to them instead. He tries another move flogging and humiliating Jesus. But they want his body broken and blood shed on a cross because he claimed to be the Son of God. One more time, Pilate weakly tries to release Jesus and one final time, the leaders stand in his way. If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar, they say. And they have Pilate where they want him, cornered, he cannot argue. And there we have it. Jesus, the only perfectly innocent one that can grant life to the supremely guilty, is sentenced to die. Not out of Pilate's decision, or the religious leader scheming, or even the crowd's frenzied screaming, but ultimately out of Jesus' own authority and willingness to lay his life down for you and me. It was always his decision. This was always God's will. We are about to witness the most powerful demonstration of God's love in action.